are as well in the midst of a debate about fairness in the context of immigration and immigration policy. So the world is flat and integrated, yet it also is asymmetrical and unstable. And the imbalances are as serious and as threatening as any pandemic. Because the real opponents on the global scene are the asymmetries between and among nations, peoples, and cultures in circumstances where some nations and some groups have yet to be able to develop to their full potential. These asymmetries or imbalances are measured in a variety of ways, relative public health, degree of poverty or comparative GDP, literacy levels, access to affordable energy, access to clean drinking water, and food. In fact, today, the richest 10 countries are 50 times richer than the poorest 10 countries. By comparison, consider that, that 250 years ago, at the onset of the Industrial Revolution, the ratio of the average income per capita between rich and poor nations was a factor of three. But we are the fortunate ones. We are here. We are literate. We are educated and knowledgeable. And knowledge-based enterprises are driving much of wealth creation and economic development today, and driving differences in life prospects between countries and within countries. While global imbalances have existed between peoples and between nations for millennia, what makes them so acute now is the degree of difference and the fact, ironically, that advances in communications via the internet and global media make asymmetries highly visible everywhere and by more people. The impact can create global instability with repercussions everywhere. This then is the stage set and the backdrop for your generation. When I graduated from college, as now, conflict and societal shifts created uncertainty and challenge. Then, as now, we stepped into a world of greater complexity, yet with greater opportunity. Since 9-11, we have had an internal focus on protecting ourselves, perhaps because the war on terror, while global, clearly has national implications and effect. As well, we have had major internal tragedies, such as the massacre at Virginia Tech. But all the while, the world has continued to interconnect. Globalization brings threats closer and makes friends and enemies alike competitors. But it also makes them collaborators. One illustration of this is modern commercial enterprise, which is 24-7, with businesses having operations in multiple places around the world in order to access markets and talent. This inherently drives collaboration among workers across cultures and geographies, all as part of advancing strategic corporate aims. Another quite different illustration of collaboration led to the award of the Nobel Peace Prize to Jody Williams in 1997. She used email to bring individuals and organizations together across the globe to pressure governments to adopt an international accord against landmines. And so, how should you react today? Of course, I believe that science and technology can help to mitigate challenges. And I believe as well that every chosen discipline has a role to play in alleviating global scourges and in creating opportunity. Meeting the challenges requires not only strength in disciplines, but also, on your part, multicultural sophistication, a global view, and intellectual agility. But two elements truly are essential. 
One element is diversity. And by this I mean diversity of outlook, whereby you are able to encompass diverse cultures with associated differences in thought, perspective, lifestyle, and practice. Diversity of approach, whereby working across multiple disciplines and sectors is welcomed and appreciated. And diversity in fact, whereby all individuals, including those of diverse ethnicities and backgrounds, are valued for their contributions and are able to compete on a level playing field in a flattening world. The other essential element is leadership, comprising vision, the ability to articulate a forward-looking, overarching idea, the courage and integrity to aim high, but to be grounded in reality, to seek wise counsel, to make and to stand by disciplined and principled choices. Involvement to engage all constituencies, enlisting their participation, profiting from their insights and harnessing their creative energies. Organization to secure the appropriate approach, to support a vision, and to establish an environment in which change can flourish. Inspiration to create torchbearers who embrace the mission generate enthusiasm and accomplish key tasks, and finally action to transform vision, courage and integrity, involvement, organization and inspiration into reality. And when the human spirit meets challenge, strengthened by diversity and reinforced by courageous leadership, innovative, creative solutions begin to emerge. And out of this strengthened coalescence, comes unexpected and often exhilarating opportunity. So this is how you should think about your commencement. This is how you should look to your futures. This is the premise on which you should build not only your individual careers, but also your connectivity to each other, to community, to nation, and to the nations and peoples of the world. Each generation assumes the mantle of challenge and of opportunity bequeathed to it by its times. And each graduating class engages them with its own inimitable character and in spirit. In doing this, you assume the mantle of leadership. And this then becomes your collective class gift to the world and to the future. So optimize who you are and what you are. Optimize your experiences and what you have learned. Optimize your opportunities. Seize them and do meaningful things. Count your blessings and then count them again and use them wisely. Congratulations and Godspeed.